how much weight do you think this beam is holding up of this building? Take a guess. If you get, if you get the guess right, I'll send you a, a free gift card to uh, Starbucks coffee or, or one of the food uh, gift cards that we have. But if you're watching this later on, let me show you what the truth is. It's holding zero weight. See this here? This is a drop down. This is an architectural feature. This beam is holding zero weight. In fact, on the other side of the building, I can actually shake the post and the beam is wiggling back and forth, all right? So that's why, folks, it's so important to make sure that you assess the site conditions for what they are, not assume that it's you know something that you've seen in 25 other buildings. Let me show you what the other side of the building looks like. There's like zero weight on that beam. There's no weight on that beam. It was put in there after the fact, trying to keep up the building, and it's, it never did anything. There was never any weight on it. It was never connect, connected correctly to the building. And it sure as hell isn't gonna do anything seismically. You know, that building's just gonna move on its own, and this is gonna stay still, or, you know, it's just not gonna do anything. So it's important to really open up stuff like this so that you actually understand what the heck the site condition is, and then you can make a good decision. Here, you've got a drop ceiling, okay? This is a drop, this is considered a drop ceiling, and typically you do this in order to hide infrastructure and plumbing fixtures and stuff like that. Yeah, so this is one condition we haven't seen uh, too often. The second condition is there's actually steel already in here. Okay, this is a, an I-beam and um, it's running the entire length of the building. So very unusual to see steel in a building this age. Well, this size, this age, it's not a very big building, it's only four units. So we're gonna have to change a little bit of the game plan of uh, how we're gonna approach the retrofit a little bit. So as we move through here, you'll see that there's a few members that are a little bit bigger, these cantilever, cantilever beams. There's four of them total that we just counted. And uh, they stick out. They're really the ones carrying a lot of the weight. Let me show you what the existing subfloor looks like. As you can see, this is a very typical diagonal uh, framing. You can see that there's a lot of knots. Uh, some knots have been actually knocked out. You know, that makes it inherently weak. So we have to address how we connect the subfloor to the joist. This is a, a big cantilever beam member that helps obviously carry the weight of this cantilever out. And it's one of, it's a structural member that's really important. So we have to tie the drag line on the ends here. The new cantilever is gonna be in here somewhere. So we have to figure out a really good way to connect it to the existing building so that it operates like we want it to. And I actually have a pretty good idea of how to do that. I'm gonna share that with you later. But we'll, we'll probably end up putting a four by, a four by 12, so that if on the horizontal, that'll cover this span here. Um, it'll cover from here to here, and then from here to here, and it'll help drag, it'll help create a tremendous amount of resistance this way um, as the building tries to move this way and this way. Um, we also have to see if we can figure out a way to keep this, this existing I-beam from rolling because typically the I-beams now, when they're installed this way, you have to install some type of bracing to keep it from rolling. So we're gonna have to address that in the changes that we have to make to the plans. So whenever you have a cantilever like you have here, the header, whether it's wood or steel, wants to roll because the building will push forward, back, left, and right. 
and it depends on how much the building is shaking that affects how much it actually moves so remember most buildings are designed to move at two percent at the top of its height so if a building is uh, let's say 16 18 feet 19 feet it's going to move about four and a half inches all right so you have to take that into account that oscillating movement is going to happen not only on the drag line but also on the return so you got to deal with that when you're coming up with a solution even though it may not be mandated by the city you have to actually retrofit the building how you think the earthquake gonna, is going to break it right so we're anticipating where it's going to be broken so uh the building breaks typically it makes this member here has historically been wood and this member actually either folds forward or folds back on the corners this connection here typically breaks let's look at the other area of concern and that's the building moving this way right even though the building may not be mandated to be retrofitted this way the building will move this way so this connection here is very important so if you look at the i-beam that rests on top of this uh, steel uh, post you can see that it's not welded there right so we're, we're gonna have to determine if this connection from here to this is enough and also from the this to the wood framing these are all things that have to be assessed and we have to determine if we have to strengthen the building more in order to be able to take the new elements that are a lot firmer these are some of the things that we have to deal with in order to make sure that the building is strong enough to deal with the new steel elements this is alex with soft store retrofit pros reminding you you don't need a contractor you need a team of pros Hey guys, we have an online learning center at Software Retrofit Pros slash learn more. Go there, check it out, learn more. And it's free.